This is the Wikipedia page for The Conqueror, 1956 film. Welcome to Wikilisten, the podcast where we read Wikipedia pages and provide commentary. I'm Victor Vernado, KSN. And I'm Rachel Teichman, LMSW. The Conqueror, everyone, is a movie that had a lot of problems, and John Wayne played Genghis Khan, who is, as a reminder, he was a not a white dude. So, way to go, John Wayne. I was going to say that after the article on the history of the world, part one, I'm yeah. a little nervous to do this article. Well, you shouldn't be nervous because the history of the world part one, we disagreed on where we were. I was like, I like this movie. And you're like, this stinks. This movie, we both agree. We'll probably agree that this movie stinks, (laughs) but it's an interesting story. This article is missing information about the film's production. Please expand the article to include this information. Further details may exist on the talk page, April 2015. The Conqueror is a 1956 American epic film directed by Dick Powell and written by Oscar Millard. The film stars John Wayne as the Mongol conqueror, Genghis Khan, and co-stars Susan Hayward, Agnes Moorhead, and Pedro Armendariz. Produced by entrepreneur Howard Hughes, the film was principally shot near St. George, Utah. Despite the stature of the cast and a respectable box office performance, the film was a critical flop. It is often ranked as one of the worst films of the 1950s and also as one of the worst films ever made. Wayne, who was at the height of his career, had lobbied for the role after reading the script and was widely believed to have been grossly miscast. The Conqueror was listed in the 1978 book, The 50 Worst Films of All Time. (laughs) Wayne was posthumously named a winner of a Golden Turkey Award for his performance in the film. Yeah, I learned that hated. word in one of our wiki listen recordings. Yeah, it is one of those things where like some words that you just haven't seen written down and you've only heard and you have to go over them. Wiki listen, I'll do it to you. Plot. Mongol chief Temujin, later to be known as Genghis Khan, falls for Borte the daughter of the Tatar's leader, and steals her away, precipitating war. Bortai spurns Timogen and is taken back in a raid. Timogen is later captured. Bortai falls in love with him and helps him escape. Timogen suspects he was betrayed by a fellow Mongol and sets out to find the traitor and to overcome the Tatars. Tatars or taters? Tatars. Maybe. Who knows? Cast. John Wayne as Temujin, later Genghis Khan. Susan Hayward as Bortai. Agnes Moorhead as Hunlun. Pedro Armendariz as Jamuga. <laughs> Thomas Gomez as Wang Khan. John Hoyt as Shaman. William Conrad as Kassar. Ted DeCorsia as Kunglik. Leslie Bradley as Targutai. Lee Van Cleef as Chepe. Peter Mamakos as Bogerchai. These guys are, I feel like these guys are just making up names and trying to make them ethnic for the white people to play these characters. It sounds like it. <laughs> Leo Gordon as Tater Captain. <laughs> Richard Liu as Captain of Wong's Guard. Michael Wayne, uncredited as Mongol Guard. Patrick. I think he's a, I think he's a son of John Wayne. John Wayne's son. Ah. Patrick Wayne, uncredited. Yes, he is also uh, an American actor, and he is also the son of John Wayne. The role of Genghis Khan was originally written for Marlon Brando, but then Brando later backed out of the role. Good. Production and cancer controversy. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah, this is the crazy part. (laughs) It gets really crazy. (laughs) Of the 220 film crew members, 91, comprising 41.36% of the crew, developed cancer during their lifetime, while 46 or 20.91% died from it. When this was learned, many suspected that filming in Utah and surrounding locations near nuclear test sites was to blame. (laughs) 
Although the number of cancer cases among the cast and crew is in line with the average for adults in the U.S. at the time, the perception of a link between the film's location and subsequent illness remains, not least because many of those involved in the film developed cancer at a younger age than average. Hmm, a case of correlation not being causation. Maybe. It's Maybe. hard to say, though. I mean, I mean, they were doing the movie during a, a nuclear testing site, and it was before people knew that radiation traveled on the wind. I don't think I knew that. There you go. <laughs> Parts of the film were shot in Utah locations such as Snow Canyon, Warner Valley, Pine Valley, Leeds, and Harrisburg. The exterior scenes were shot near St. George, Utah, which is 137 miles, 220 kilometers downwind of the United States government's Nevada National Security Site and received the brunt of nuclear fallout from testing active in this period. In 1953, 11 above ground nuclear weapons tests occurred at the site as part of Operation Upshot Knothole. The cast and crew spent many difficult weeks at the site, and producer Howard Hughes later shipped 60 tons of dirt back to Hollywood in order to match the Utah terrain and lend realism to studio reshoots. The filmmakers knew about the nuclear test, but the federal government had assured residents that the test posed no hazard to the public health. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So you're you're a film person. You've worked on movies. You've written movies. You've been in movies. Is that a thing that that directors will ship dirt to a set? No, uh, he was a producer, by the way. So that's a thing that producers do things like that. Usually the director will ask for things and the producers will make it happen. Uh, OK, yeah, you're not really answering the question here. Yeah, I am. you said, is that a thing that directors ship dirt? No, that is not a thing. But producers do that. Yes. Got it. Okay. So Howard Hughes, the director was like, we need to do reshoots, but we don't have the ability to match the terrain. And then he was like, Howard Hughes, can you get me a bunch of dirt? And then Howard Hughes was like, hey, I'm crazy Howard Hughes. I'd love to get you dirt. It would be an honor for me to order dirt. Director Powell died of cancer in January 1963, seven years after the film's release. Amon Daris was diagnosed with kidney cancer in 1960 and killed himself in June 1963 after he learned his condition had become terminal. Wayne, Hayward, and Moorhead all died of cancer in the 1970s. Hoyt died of lung cancer in 1991. Van Cleef's secondary cause of death was listed as throat cancer. Some point to other factors, such as the wide use of tobacco. Wayne, in particular, was a heavy smoker, and Wayne himself believed his stomach cancer to have been a result of his six-pack-a-day cigarette habit. Good grief. <laughs> Agnes Moorhead was a non-smoker, teetotaler, and a health fanatic, yet died of cancer. Her mother, Mary, maintained it was working on The Conqueror that ultimately killed Agnes. Several of Wayne and Hayward's relatives who visited the set also had cancer scares. Michael Wayne developed skin cancer, his brother Patrick had a benign tumor removed from his breast, and Hayward's son, Tim Barker, had a benign tumor removed from his mouth. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's no exact proof, but this is pretty damning. <laughs> I'm not 100% convinced, but it's not looking uh -huh. good. Reportedly, Hughes felt guilty about his decisions regarding the film's production, particularly over the decision to film at a hazardous site. <laughs> he bought every print of the film for $12 million and kept it out of circulation for many years until Universal Pictures purchased the film from his estate in 1979. The Conqueror, along with Ice Station Zebra, is said to be one of the films Hughes watched endlessly during his last years. Hmm. So at this point, Howard Hughes was uh, peeing in uh, jars in his house and his nails were growing crazy long and he would just go up into his attic and just watch movies. And it was Ice Station Zebra and The Conqueror that he would just watch over and over again while hanging out with his own pee-pee. Hmm, yes, mental illness. Dr. Robert Pendleton, then a professor of biology at the University of Utah, is reported to have stated in 1980... With these numbers, this case could qualify as an epidemic. 
the connection between fallout radiation and cancer in individual cases has been practically impossible to prove conclusively. But in a group this size, you'd expect only 30-some cancers to develop. With 91 cancer cases, I think the tie-in to their exposure on the set of The Conqueror would hold up in a court of law. Several casting crew members, as well as relatives of those who died, considered suing the government for negligence, claiming it knew more about the hazards in the area than it let on. Since the primary cast and crew numbered about 220 and a considerable number of cancer cases would be expected, controversy exists as to whether the actual results are attributable to radiation at the nearby nuclear weapons test site. Statistically, the odds of developing cancer for men in the U.S. population are 43%, and the odds of dying of cancer are 23%, very near what was found in this film crew. The statistic does not include the Native Americans' Paiute extras in the film. Release. This section needs expansion. You can help by adding to it. April 2015. The Conqueror received an A classification equivalent to a PG rating in the U.S., from the British Board of Film Censors, but also required cuts to obtain the rating. The film premiered in London on February 2nd, 1956, before its Los Angeles premiere on February 22nd, an official theatrical release on March 28th. After Universal purchased the film rights in 1979, the studio released the film on DVD as part of their Vault series on June 12th, 2012. Critical Reception The critical reception was negative. A. H. Weiler of the New York Times called the film an Oriental Western with a script that should get a few unintentional laughs. Weiler wrote that John Wayne gave an elementary portrayal of Genghis while constantly being unhorsed by such lines as, You are beautiful in your wrath. Variety called the film a fanciful, colorful tale suggestive of the vivid period with a daring do dash that pays off, adding the marquee value of the John Wayne Susan Hayward teaming more than offsets an incongruity of the casting. Edward Schallert of the Los Angeles Times wrote the film had a storming quality about it overall, which unfortunately makes some of the love scenes seem all but laughable. He added, Powell deserves much credit for maneuvering the fierce and sensational battle scenes, which are a big highlight when Mongols and Tartars clash. Harrison Reports wrote the general audiences should be more than satisfied by the thrilling battle scenes and strong romance, but the story does not come through the screen with any appreciable dramatic force, and the acting is no more than acceptable. John McCartan of The New Yorker called the film pure Hollywood moonshine. You never saw <laughs> so many horses fall down in your life. Still, even though their tumbling is a far superior to the antics of the actors, it presently becomes tiresome. Time magazine wrote that Wayne portrays the great conqueror as a sort of cross between a square shooting sheriff and a Mongolian idiot. The idea is good for a couple of snickers, but after that, it never wanes, but it bores. <laughs> the monthly film bulletin called it a rambling and rather ordinary Western type spectacle. The weekly contrived narrative is singularly lacking in dramatic tension, and it is difficult to see this Temujin for all his high-flown cries to heaven to support his destiny as a potential world beater or as even an amiable bandit. He is merely John Wayne struggling with an unfortunate piece of casting and with such embarrassingly silly lines as, I feel this harder woman is for me. <laughs> I love they keep calling out lines for the movie. They're like, and this was dumb, and this was dumb. The Philadelphia Inquirer predicted success for the film. Should be a three-bell ringer among the popcorn set. The film is aptly titled, and after 111 minutes of gore and intrigue, Wayne sets himself up as Genghis Khan with Susan Haywood beside him. Screenplay right Oscar Miller and producer-director Dick Powell have done competent work. Philly stamp of approval. The film is listed in Golden Raspberry Award founder John Wilson's book, The Official Razzie Movie Guide, as one of the 100 most enjoyably bad movies ever made. Box Office The film 
was the 11th most successful film at the North American box office in 1956, earning $4.5 million. Comic book adaptation. Dell Four Color number 690, April 1956. I did not know there was a comic book ac- adaptation. I might want to look up some of those images to see what they're about. It sounds wild. Yeah, it certainly, certainly does. Here's some interesting facts. One, so John Wayne cast himself. He, it wasn't bad casting. He did it to himself. He was like, I want to be this guy. Also, apparently, he went into Dick Powell's office and found the Conqueror in the trash. So, like, Dick Powell had just thrown the movie (laughs) script away. And then John Wayne in his office was like, hey, let me check out what's in Dick Powell's trash, pulled out the movie, and then demanded to star in it. Isn't that insane? That is insane. (laughs) It's like, what's in this trash? Ooh, Genghis Khan, (laughs) that should be me. I wonder why I was in the trash. He probably missed the desk. (laughs) This has been the Wikipedia page for The Conqueror 1956 film. Thanks for listening to Wikilisten. You can find us at wikilisten.com and on all social media at Wikilisten, except for Twitter, which is at wiki underscore listen. If there is a particular page you'd like us to read, please let us know. 